Hello, this is SimsArt, and today I'm going to show how to use the 3D primitives and 3D settings in Clip Studio Paint, and how to use these tools to create some backgrounds for our artworks. Backgrounds can be tricky and perspective rules are really hard to grasp. This is why many artists always try to find new ways to approach this task easily. Clip Studio Paint, for example, give us many tools to tackle this necessary step in our illustrations. The ones we are going to discuss today are the 3D primitives and the settings to use them in the most easy and intuitive way. However, I want to say that in order to have a nice illustration, it is necessary a basic understanding of perspective and art basics. The first step in order to create backgrounds using 3D primitives as a reference is to create a new document. Resolution depends on the purpose of the artwork. For this example, I'm going to use poster proportions. Remember that in this process, we're going to make a reference picture that's going to help us for the background design. So the resolution is not gonna be really important since we can always export the final picture in a higher resolution canvas once we're ready to use it as a reference. Once the file is ready, I'd suggest rearranging the workspace in a way where we can see all the tools we need easily. The most important window I'd recommend for following along easily are the Sub tool, Tool property, Layer property, Navigator, and Layer window. Last but not least, the most important window for the task we're going to perform, Material Primitive. Here, we'll find all the primitives we'll need to create our reference materials. Before we jump in the 3D model side of this process, we need an idea. This is usually the most important part of the process and will make a great difference between a boring background and an interesting one. The sketch is supposed to be loose and represent what elements we need. It also serves the purpose of giving us an idea of what type of perspective we are looking for and where the horizon line is. Finally, it's time to bring the primitives to the canvas. Primitives are simple shapes in a three-dimensional space. We're talking of spheres, cubes, pyramids, etc. These simple shapes are the base from which every 3D model is usually built upon. For this exercise, we are going to use them almost in their original shape, since they are going to serve the purpose to give us a visual aid for the perspective construction. In order to place primitives on our workspace, we'll look at the Material Primitive panel. Here, we'll find a list with all the primitives currently in our Clip Studio Paint assets. The default list should already have some primitives like a cube, a sphere, a pyramid or a cone, and a flat surface. To place the primitive in the workspace, just drag and drop the primitive from the panel to the canvas. I would place them roughly in the middle since we're going to move them later. Now that the primitive is in place, Clip Studio Paint will automatically create a special 3D environment layer that we can find in the layer window. We can move in this 3D space by clicking on one of the three camera icons on top of the selected object. To select an object, we can click on the thumbnail in the layer window or on the primitive itself on the canvas. With the primitive selected, we can rotate it by clicking and keep pressing the left mouse button. We can pan it clicking and keep pressing the middle mouse button and zooming in and out, right clicking and keeping pressing the right mouse button. With these three movements, we can navigate our 3D environment easily and quickly align the elements according to our idea. Alternatively, we can obtain the same effects clicking and dragging the mouse on the camera icons on top of the selected object. With this overview on the camera movements, we reached the end of this first video. In the next videos, we will see more options on how to manipulate the 3D objects in Clip Studio Paint and how to create a background using these 3D models as a reference. With all that being said, I hope you find this video useful and for any question, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. See you next time.